Hello Pokemon Trainers! Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium Singles video here on iStarly TV. This is part of my Road to Master series where I try to climb the online ranked Battle Stadium Singles ladder. And today I have a brand new team to show you. And this is different than the team that I've been focusing on if you've been watching my other videos. This month for the new season I'm going to be mainly focusing on one team and just developing it and changing it as the season goes on to see how high I can get with it and, and see how well I can do with it and also see how how strong I can make the team overall and make changes. Anyway, today we're taking a break from that team and we have a new team that I've built and it's a fun one showcasing a couple newer Pokemon, at least they are new to Scarlet and Violet, and this is Sneasler and Rillaboom. So the deal with Sneasler is that it has the Unburden ability, which means when it consumes its item, its speed is doubled. That's an ability that a lot of Pokemon have access to, but Sneasler is interesting. Its offensive and defensive typing are really unique and actually really good. It's actually a pretty strong Pokemon. It has a high attack stat, really high speed stat as well. So basically once our grassy seed is consumed in grassy terrain, we are the fastest thing in the game and we have a plus one defense boost as well because that's what grassy seed does is in grassy terrain you consume it and you get plus one defense so yeah i mean we're just kind of gonna go from there and if you've watched in the past like a, a long time ago or in the early stages of scarlet and violet singles i was using a team with haulucha and arboliva and basically this is an upgraded version of that team because sneezler and rillaboom respectively are stronger than, you know, Arboliva or uh, Halucha and Arboliva. So yeah, hopefully we can get a lot done here. Now the Sneasler I'm using, we have Dire Claw, which is pretty much the move you always want on Sneasler. It's Sneasler's signature move, which is 80 base power physical attack. And it has like a, I think a 50% chance of either poisoning, putting to sleep or paralyzing the opponent, which is really good. And then close combat, you know, no explanation needed, strong move. And then we have acrobatics. Since I'm going to be consuming my item, acrobatics will be 110 base power. And I felt like it complements Sneasler's other moves decently well. Finally, we have Swords Dance to boost our attack stat if needed. And then I went Terra Flying because I, I feel like it might complement Sneasler's typing decently well. But of course, it also boosts the power of Acrobatics. So we're going to see how this goes. Um, my Sneasler is max attack and max speed. And I'm an adamant nature, so we'll see if that works out. I considered having some bulk in there, but I, I found that there are situations where Rillaboom gets knocked out or whatever the case. Or, or the grassy terrain runs out or something, or we're, we're forced to uh, switch out Sneasler and lose the Unburden. And then I'm just slower than everything if I have max HP. So that can be a little awkward, um, though it might not matter that much. We'll see, that, that might come into play. Then we have Rillaboom who enables Sneasler. So in most games that I'm bringing Sneasler, I know just about every game that I'm bringing Sneasler, I'm probably gonna be bringing Rillaboom as well. Rillaboom's just a solid Pokemon as well. It hits really hard. This is Choice Band with an adamant nature and in grassy terrain, that wood hammer hits really, really hard. I remember this is a Pokemon that I liked using in Sword and Shield and it was really strong. It, it was surprisingly strong. So hopefully we can kind of further, you know, show off how strong Rillaboom is here. And then, yeah, the moves, I mean, Woodhammer is the main move we're going to want to go for because it just hits so hard. But we have U-Turn to get out of there against bulkier Pokemon or Pokemon we don't want to face. Also have Knock Off, of course, to knock items off, <laughs> which can be helpful against certain things. And then Hammer Arm just for coverage. Again, the, the move I'm using most is going to be Woodhammer. After that, we have Tauros. Um, I wanted a Pokemon that could really help me against Chien Pao, and I feel like uh, Paldean Tauros, the Blaze Breed, is in a pretty good spot for that. Its typing is really good against Chien Pao, and we also have access to Intimidate and Will-O-Wisp, so yeah, this is a Tauros that I've used a lot, you know, I, I like this Tauros a lot. I feel like it, it's it's a sleeper pick, like just the ability to, to lower the attack stat of opponents and then just potentially burn them. Great against Dragonite, great against Chin Pao, great against a lot of physical attackers in the meta. So I liked where Tauros fit on the team. The next two Pokemon we have here, of course, you know, if I'm building a gimmicky team, uh, you know, I, I kind of want to balance it out with some really good Pokemon that don't have to be gimmicky, that are just straight up good. And I have that with Fluttermane and Chin Pao. You know, these are the two Pokemon I'm always talking about as like just two of the best Pokemon in the meta, if not the two best, because they're just so offensive, so strong, so fast which is important as well, and I mean, that's why I'm using them. So this Fluttermane, I think I've used it in the past. I have booster energy to boost my speed, and I have just enough 
um, speed investment, so that speed is my highest stat. And then I have the rest of it, well, ma max uh, special attack, and then the rest of it in defense, I believe, just to make me a little tankier. We'll see if that helps. I also have Parish Song, which is pretty good, and Terra Normal, which helps me against opposing Flutter mains. And then we have Qian Pao. Again, not too much explanation needed this time around, though. I'm opting for uh, Terra Electric with Terra Blast because Electric and Ice have really good coverage together. So the downside with this is, you know, and, and I actually did a test battle with this team and this came up. Um, Sucker Punch is my only go, my only dark type move, and I had an opponent who had a gold dango, and like they knew I had Sucker Punch, so they were just able to like play around that, and you know they they ended up getting the better of me because I didn't have a good dark type move to hit them with because they were just you know not using attacking moves against me for a while. So that's a downside is we don't have a straight up offensive dark type move. We only have Sucker Punch, so. Yeah, that could be a problem, but Qian Pao is just such a strong Pokemon, you know, it probably won't matter too much. Finally, the last Pokemon I have here is Heatran. I just wanted a bulky Pokemon that's just good all round. And Terra Grass is nice, you know, for the uh, grassy terrain, although I guess that kind of doesn't matter. Um, but Grass, Terra Grass is a great type for, for Heatran. And then we have Stealth Rock. Just having a Stealth Rock Pokemon is great for this team as well. And then the rest of it is pretty pretty self-explanatory for Heatran. As far as EVs for Heatran, I think I have just enough EVs to outspeed, I think, Breloom. And then the rest of it, or, or Max uh, Special Attack, and then the rest of it in HP. Um, anyway, yeah, so this is the team. We'll see how it goes. Again, it, I definitely want to try out Rillaboom and Sneasler as much as I can, so let's get to some battles. All right. <laughs> Already don't love my opponent's team because they have Toxapex and Cresselia, two Pokemon that are just really good against me. I mean, I'm, if I can get up Swords Dances, maybe that's enough. I mean, Chen Pao's also solid against those just because it can lower their defenses with its ability. I think Fluttermane's also good because of uh, Parish Song. I don't know. I feel like, and, and I have these at the top, I feel like it's very telegraph. Like when my opponent sees my team, they're gonna be preparing for the Sneasler uh, Rillaboom combo. So that's something I have to keep in mind. I don't know, I think I like Chen Pao here regardless. Do I lead with it though? It's kind of like a good wild card, like a good closer. So, you know what? Whatever. I'm just going to lead with the combo and then bring Chen Pao in the back. I mean, the, the video here is meant to show off this, what I'm calling this combo. And I think, again, I personally believe Rillaboom and Sneasler are strong enough to hold their own, even, you know, even in situations like this where I feel like the opponent might be prepared for it. Plus, I mean, Choice Banded Rillaboom should hit pretty hard. So even if they lead with something like Toxapex, I don't think I'm too scared of it, although very smartly they do lead with their Heatran. I guess I should have seen that coming, but I'm I'm also not that upset about this. Question is what investment they have. They are Air Balloon. I do have Hammer Arm. I also have Knock Off. Well, Knock Off won't matter. Never mind. I have Hammer Arm. I could also U-Turn. I think I'm going to U-Turn here. The problem is if they, even if I'm, yeah, I think U-Turn's actually a problem. I'm going to Hammer Arm, because with U-Turn, it's like, if I'm faster than them, then I go into Sneasler. Ooh, that does a lot of damage. If I'm faster than them, then I go into Sneasler, and they get to attack me and do a ton of damage. Um, but if I'm slower, then they probably just knock me out, so it's kind of a lose-lose for that. Now, the downside here is that Hammer Arm lowers my speed, so they are probably going to be faster than me now, and they are going to knock me out. Although, they did miss that first Magma Storm, so it's important to keep in mind. Their Heatran's gonna get a little bit more recovery here, but it's not that big of a deal because I can just go into Sneasler, of course, and I'm pretty much guaranteed to knock them out. However, the problem here is the only move I have for the Heatran is Close Combat. I could take a risk and go Acrobatics, but I'm not sure that'll knock them out. I think if I Terra and go Acrobatics, I might be able to knock them out. But if I Terra, that makes it a little harder to take on Toxapex in particular. Huh. I think I just go close combat just to play it safe. I don't want to Terrastalize this early. Terra flying would be nice, but I, I just want to have the option to, to go Terra electric with Chen Pao because my opponent has Toxapex and they also have Urshifu. It doesn't tell us what Urshifu they have, but I'm assuming it's the water one, so... Just having that ability to, to go Terra Electric on Chen Pao should, should help me a lot. And if I see that they don't have Toxapex or, Ch or Ursa, 
Urshifu, <laughs> and you know I'm able to handle those, then then I might be able to make that decision otherwise. So they go into Zapdos now. They might go like Hurricane. They might go for a Flying type move, which means I could go Terra Flying to to take neutral damage rather than super effective damage. The thing is, if they don't have Hurricane or if they don't want to risk it, they might just go for an Electric move. And if I go Terra Flying, that just you know is really bad. So I'm just gonna Dire Claw here. I don't expect it to knock them out, but it might put them to sleep or poison or paralyze them. It doesn't. All right, Rocky Helmet. And they do go Hurricane. So had I gone um, Terra Flying, had I gone Terra Flying, that would have been good. However, this is fine <clears throat> because Chen Pao's so strong that I am capable of, you know, just kind of putting a lot of pressure on them single-handedly. Like, even though they have two Pokemon left, Chin Pao's so good. Like, it can just, it can, it absolutely can take on two Pokemon by itself. If their last Pokemon's Cresselia, though, I am definitely in trouble. Like, that, if their last Pokemon's Cresselia, that is where I'm really going to regret not having Crunch or, or Throat Chop. Just a, a dark type move that I can use regardless of what they go for. But if they do have Cresselia, all I have for super effective damage is Sucker Punch. However, they have not Terrastalized, so it's possible if they have Cresselia, they might Terrastalize just to like try to ignore the, the dark type move. And that then it's actually fine if I don't have um, Crunch. Luckily, I get a little bit of HP recovery thanks to that grassy terrain. So we're, we're down one to one each. So final Pokemon, if their Pokemon is not Cresselia, I think I have a really good chance against everything else that they brought. Fluttermane, okay. Um, if they have booster energy, I'm gonna scream. They have booster energy, y'all, okay. Well, the thing is, I can just go Terra Electric. And now the question is, what do I click? They, they also might Terrastalize. They are fat. They're guaranteed faster than me now. Yikes. I'm going to Terra Blast. This is a huge risk because they are faster than me. So if they go for... Like, like they might just knock me out or like regardless of what they go for. But I'm expecting them to go Moon Blast. Obviously, because I'm Terrastalizing, they're Terra Normal. Okay, so I'm glad I didn't go Sucker Punch because Sucker Punch definitely would not have knocked them out. Um... Or, I mean, I'm pretty sure it would not have knocked them out anymore. Well, at the same time, Sucker Punch, whether they whether they don't Terrastalize or do Terrastalize, Sucker Punch does the same damage. So, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we'll see what happens here. This could be the last turn of the battle, of course. Uh, they go Mystical Fire. Okay, that's good. That's great. That's great, because I definitely survived that. That was pretty risky in my opponent's part. Maybe they thought I was going to Terrastalize into something that resists Fairy, so that's why they didn't go Moonblast, but I don't know. At that point, nice, we win. <laughs> At that point, I don't know if you can make that kind of prediction, right? Like, it makes sense. I don't know. To me, it doesn't make sense that they didn't go for Moonblast. I think they absolutely should have gone for Moonblast there. Um, that might have potentially knocked me out. Actually, I guess not. I don't know. Either way, we end up winning that battle. It was a really close one, and our combo did not look that amazing, but, you know, uh, Sneasler did some work. I mean, it did a lot of damage to that Zapdos, which is nice. Zapdos also had Rocky Helmet, which leads me to believe that it might have had some bulk investment, and we did a lot of damage to it, right? Either way, that was a fun one, and, you know, we, d we did get to bring the combo, show it off. I keep calling it the combo, I'm, you know, it's, it's the combo of Rillaboom with... Uh, you know, Grassy Seed Unburden uh, Sneasler. So that's why I'm calling it that. Let's do another one. All right, cool stuff here. They've got Hippowdon, which is a good Pokemon that you typically don't see as often. The funny thing is I have Rillaboom. And again, I think most p opponents are going to expect me to lead with Rillaboom. So I, I feel like that dissuades my opponent from leading with uh, their Hippowdon. I actually think I might lead with Tauros here, which is something I never thought I'd say. <laughs> Tauros, I, I feel like if they're expecting me to lead Rillaboom, they might lead with Chen Pao. And Tauros is great against Chen Pao. The thing is, Tauros is also fine against uh, Hippowdon. So, like, no matter which one they lead with, and I think Tauros is a good spot. Um, I guess another rough situation would be if they lead with, like, Zapdos or Fluttermane. I think Tauros can take on Fluttermane decently, although against Zapdos, it, it might struggle a little bit. Although I think we speed tie, so there's a chance that I get to outspeed them and do some damage before they do a lot of damage to me. So I'm fine leading with Tauros here. Um, the other question, though, is how does Sneasler look? I actually think Sneasler looks okay, although Zapdos, once again, is a little bit of a problem. 
But I think I might want to bring it. I mean, we could make this battle easy. We could go easy mode with this battle and bring like Fluttermane and Chen Pao and probably not have many issues, but we're going to play on hard mode today. <laughs> that's why, I mean, that's why we're playing Sneasler and Rillaboom. You know, they're, it's fun when it works. They're good Pokemon when it works. But in all honesty, like if you want a strong offensive Pokemon, why don't you just use, you know, uh, Fluttermane or Chen Pao, right? Um, uh, another thing that I've seen, if you saw my previous video, you know, Sneasler can also be like self uh, functioning, like it doesn't need Rillaboom. A lot of people have been using Fake Out with the normal gem and that still gets the Unburden going. So that's another good option for Sneasler. My opponent, I guess, makes a prediction here and leads with their Lucario which is kind of weird. I'm faster than Lucario, so I'm just going to Will-O-Wisp, unless they're Choice Scarf. They do have Inner Focus, so I kind of feel like they might have expected me to lead with Tauros. So this might have been a good read on my opponent's part, but what is not a good read is bringing a Lucario. <laughs> and they have Earthquake. So yeah, this is just actually just going really badly for me right off the bat. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and close combat now that they see that I was going to go for Will-O-Wisp, so this might dissuade them. Oh, oh, I was going to say, wait, they might have Extreme Speed, but yeah, we take them down to a Focus Sash. They had gone for Earthquake, so this lets me go into Rillaboom pretty safely, which is really nice because I have the Eject Pack. So this, this is actually working out pretty well for me. Um, in a previous version of this team, I actually had White Herb on Tauros, which resets your stat drops. Um, I'm In this situation, I'm really glad that I have Eject Pack rather than <laughs> White Herb. Eject Pack, of course, as you saw, when, I, when my stats get lowered, I automatically switch out. And so when I use close combat, I automatically switch out into something. So it's good for, it's great for momentum actually. Uh, now they go Earthquake and I'm gonna take zero damage from this. Um, Lucario, you know, Lucario is a great Pokemon. I mean, it's a cool Pokemon. It's unfortunately not that good. There are so many Pokemon that are just better than it. Like it, it's got power crept so hard. Now I kind of feel like they're just gonna stay in and faint. I'm just gonna click Wood Hammer. I think it's guaranteed to knock them out. And, oh wow, and I was gonna say, and if they happen to switch, we might get a ton of damage on whatever comes in, unless it's Zapdos, which would be annoying. N wow, we might just cleanly one-hit KO this thing. Because their, their Lucario had Sash, so this won't. Perfect, that's beautiful. I don't know what they expected though, because like, if you know anything about Rillaboom's moves, you should know that I have access to Hammer Arm, and I mean, and I almost went for Hammer Arm. Hammer Arm also would have knocked out Qian Pao, so I don't know why you make that switch there. That's really weird. Unless they thought I was just gonna go for like a weak grass move. I don't know, that's strange. We might survive like an earth, an outrage from Garchomp. Definitely an earthquake, but um, there, my opponent's absolutely on the back foot now. They go Terra Fire. Okay, never mind. we're not gonna survive. They're gonna go Terra Blast, I'm sure, or even Fire Fang. So yeah, we're dead here, but then that lets us go into Sneasler and go from there. Go into Sneasler and probably just go Terra Flying. I like that. Yeah, okay, so they knock us out. I guess if they're Choice Scarf, that could be scary because Terra, Terra Blast might do a lot to Sneasler. Uh, we could go into Tauros and get the Intimidate on them. And then Scout if they are choice scarfed or not does that matter i don't think that matters actually we got to be mindful of the of the grassy terrain turns but i think this might actually be decent because the thing is i i feel like lucario's easy for my for either of my last two pokemon to knock out so i'm not really worried about lucario um but if my last pokemon ends up being tauros like if my Sne sneezler ends up fainting then Tauros cannot beat uh, Garchomp. So I just want to scout what they're going to do. They do go Terra Blast, which unfortunately because of the Intimidate... Well, actually, no, this works out really well. I was going to say, unfortunately, they don't knock us out because then that means that we have one more turn wasted of Grassy Terrain before we get to switch into Sneasler. But with the Rough Skin here, we are going to get knocked out. So everything's kind of clicking back into place for us really nicely. This, this makes us faint, which means we get to go right into Sneasler and not really waste any time. We are also getting a defense boost from our Grassy Seed, so we should be able to take this Terra Blast. And I think what, what was revealed to us there is that my opponent um, is Choice Scarfed, which is actually kind of good for them because that means they're locked into Terra Blast, not like Earthquake or something. I don't know. Um, I guess I'm going to Terra just in case, just in case they kind of faked us out with the 
going for Terror Blast instead of going for Earthquake there. And then I think at that point, because I'm Terrestrializing, at that point I might as well just go Acrobatics. Because it'll do more damage than Dire Claw since we're going to be Terrestrialized. Yeah, we go Terra Flying here. Again, just in case my opponent is not Choice Scarf. Because uh, Garchomp outspeeds uh, Tauros anyway, naturally. So, you know, they could have just gone for Terra Blast there just for the heck of it. Okay, cool. I mean, well, we knew we were going to be faster. And I should be able to live any hit from them. And I knocked them out anyway, so it, does, it just doesn't matter. They go into Lucario. And if, even if they have Extreme Speed, I should take it really well because I have a lot of health left and I am at plus one defense. So another cool battle, another good battle here. Love me some Garchomp. You know, Garchomp was another Pokemon that was at the top of the meta for a while at the beginning of Scarlet and Violet. And unfortunately, since since all these releases have come out, like Paradox Pokemon, Ruin Legends, and now all of these new Pokemon added with Pokemon Home, Garchomp has just fallen further and further from the top. So it's pretty sad because Garchomp's a good Pokemon. It actually does a lot of damage, wow. So yeah, that if, if I had somehow taken any... So, okay, sorry. I know I was just talking about Garchomp and I, I do miss Garchomp being at the top, but anyways. So me switching into Tauros first before Sneezer was actually a pretty big deal. I actually might have lost this battle if I hadn't switched into Tauros first. So it was kind of a risk, but I think it was like a smarter and more patient play because we got the Intimidate on Garchomp and most importantly, we got some damage on it, which allowed Sneasler to more easily knock it out. Because at full health, I kind of feel like Garchomp would survive a an Acrobatics and then they would go for Terra Blast, do a ton of damage to us. And then Lucario would come in and possibly knock us out with that uh, that extreme speed because that extreme speed actually did a good chunk of damage even though I'm at plus one defense so that actually mattered <laughs> um, so cool stuff and yeah the team's looking fun so far I love that I'm getting to show off you know the combo let's go for game three let's see if I can bring it again battle number three we've got Glamora Glamora is a Pokemon that I find really annoying <laughs> Um, however, this time around, it, I don't think I'm that annoyed of it because, it, you know, the one thing that's annoying about Glamora is if you hit it with a physical move, it automatically gets up Toxic Spikes, which can be very annoying, but I do have a Poison-type Pokemon on my team, so I might not be as worried about that. So, again, we have the combo. It's pretty telegraphed. What could my opponent bring to stop that or to counter lead? I feel like Glamora is really likely for my opponent. And then they also have potentially Chien Pao. I think I just want to bring it. I think it's just fine. But one Pokemon that I'm actually not happy about seeing is going to be that Dragonite. So I'm going to need to make sure I have an answer for that. I could have Fluttermane against Dragonite. Actually, maybe it's just... Is it just Tauros? What other Pokemon am I, am I going to struggle with as Sneasler? Goldango, actually. Actually, Goldango's typing is perfect against Sneasler's moves. Yikes. I don't like that at all. So these three Pokemon are good against Goldango and Dragonite. It's just kind of a matter of, like, which one do I bring? Oh, no. I think it's going to be... Oh, God. I don't know if I made the right choice. This might be a mistake. Honestly, once again, I probably should not have brought the combo, but... Because it's, it's just like, my opponent sees that, they see those two Pokemon and they know what I'm doing. And they, it's like, they, they know that I'm going to try to execute that, like, to get, to get Sneasler into play and get that grassy terrain and all that. Um, so it's kind of easy to beat, it's kind of easy to counter. But anyways, they leave Glamora pretty much as expected, and I'm just going to go ahead and fire off that wood hammer. Obviously, we could also Terrastalize with Rillaboom. We are Terra Grass, which would further boost the damage from Woodhammer. But, I mean, it's, that's a risk. Like, I don't think you ever really want to do that because <laughs> then you just waste the Terra right away. Although, I guess if you're against, like, a, I don't know, like a Cresselia lead or something and you just want to guarantee you get that kill, yikes, they go for Sludge Wave. Okay. I guess I should have seen that coming. That was kind of dumb on my part. It's just that Glamora, I feel like typically they don't run that move? Oh, no, actually they do. That was really just dumb of me. So now we're they're gonna get up the hazards. Go into Sneasler. I think I have to Terra here in case they go for a ground type move because sometimes they do run Mud Shot. Um, actually, my typing's really good. Depending on their moveset, my typing is really good against them. So I'm gonna Terra and just Swords Dance. Another problem though is that they might have Focus Sash. So 
This could be a really awkward situation for us. Sneasler, Sneasler is really cool though. Yeah, you can tell they're thinking because they might not have any moves that can hit us. So that is the thing about Sneasler, like something that I've encountered about Sneasler is like, some Pokemon just don't have moves for it because its typing is actually really strong. Like, it, it's a pretty good defensive typing. We go Terra Flying, hoping they go for a ground type move or something. They might have just said like, screw it and might have just gone for like a poison move, which would be really rough for us. Perfect, they go Earth Power, absolutely perfect, okay. Now they know that we're a flying type though and they can just easily go for uh, you know, a poison move or a rock move if they have it. They're probably gonna be Focus Sash. If they're not Focus Sash, it's gonna be great for us. Also, nice, perfect, perfect, okay. Another thing that's a little awkward about this Sneasler set is that the fact that we're Terra Flying means that once we're Terrastalized, we don't get the recovery from Grassy Terrain, which does matter sometimes. There have been a couple times where that has mattered. Um, but luckily right now, you know, we're at full health, so it doesn't matter. Uh, we are at neutral defense now because we went for close combat. They go into Goldango. Oh God, yeah, this is the one Pokemon that I just was hoping they wouldn't bring. Goldango's perfect against us, actually. Maybe they'll Terra, but I highly doubt it. If we can do a ton of damage to this, that's great though. And especially if we can live a hit from them. Because Acrobatics will probably still do a good chunk even though they resist. Yeah, wow, that's a two hit KO. They go Shadow Ball, which I might survive. I'm at minus one special defense though. Wow, okay, that's perfect. And yeah, we're just gonna click Acrobatics. I don't think they have a good switch into Acrobatics, so they kind of have to just stay in here. Hopefully we knock them out. If we don't though, we have uh, Tauros in the back. Although they could be Choice Scarf, but... We might just knock them out here, which would be just amazing. Because if we knock them out here, I, I don't remember everyone on their team, but I think we're in a pretty good position against most everything else. Like if they if they go into Dra well, if they go Dragonite, they're gonna have extreme speed, so that's rough. If they go Dragonite though, we might have an okay chance with Tauros. Wow, they switch. Interesting. Could be Dragonite. It is, of course, Dragonite. <laughs> Dragonite's still just an amazing Pokemon. We're gonna do some damage here, but like I said, we're pretty much dead now because they're gonna just go Extreme Speed. We do a lot of damage. They do have Leftovers, which is annoying. <clears throat> they can't, they, they have to click Extreme Speed though. And I do think just about every Dragonite runs, like you should run Extreme Speed if you're playing Dragonite. If they mess up though and don't go Extreme Speed, we're, we have a, <gasps> what? Uh, are you okay, bro? Whoa, okay, I'll take it. I guess, well, okay, there there are some Dragonite sets that do not run extreme speed, I guess. Like, I think there's the one with like Fire Spin and like Roost and like Thunder Wave or, or those types of moves. Um, those sets typically don't run extreme speed, but I think most other Dragonites do. I'm of the opinion that you should run extreme speed if you're running Dragonite, but hey, that, that was amazing. That was a battle where we probably shouldn't have won with Sneasler, but we did <laughs> because they had multi-skill Dragonite. They had Goldango again, who's perfect against us, but somehow everything just worked for us. So, hey, that was great. We got three wins with this team. You know, I couldn't have asked for anything better, honestly, to showcase a team like this because I, I think it's a fun team. And, you know, again, if you want to win a lot, you know, you, you're probably better off just running the best offensive Pokemon in the meta. But if you want to have fun and and still sometimes win because it's a it's a good team, this team's a good one. So let's show it off real quick. So here is the team. Um, yeah, there's the team code if you want to try it out for yourself. You know, it is a lot of fun. Of course, if you have any suggestions to make it better, let me know because I've tried other things with the team. I tried ma max HP with Sneasler and there are times where it works really well, where it kind of you know, not having speed investment doesn't matter because like since you're doubling your fa your good speed anyway, like you're gonna be faster than everything in the meta. But there are times, like I said, where grassy terrain runs out or where you don't have Rillaboom or whatever the case and you kind of miss that speed. So either way, Sneasler is a fun Pokemon. I think it has a lot going for it. Rillaboom's also a good Pokemon that, you know, can do a ton of damage out of nowhere as we saw. And Tauros too, like I like how, even though I had Fluttermane and Goldang, or sorry, Fluttermane and Chen Pao and Heatran on my team, 
I still showcased Rillaboom, Sneasler, and Tauros more. <laughs> and those are three Pokemon that don't see a lot of play. So fun stuff. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. As always, if you have suggestions for the team, or if you have your own teams you'd like to share and like me to show off in a video, drop those codes below. I appreciate you watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please like and subscribe for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos. And I'll see you next time.